drawing, which really wants to be flat, but use light to then be able to move into it. And so I, I like that idea because there's a certain amount of tension between those extremes, between the, the flatness of the painting and then what color and light was able to do in terms of opening up that space. So for all the things I think that you can recognize in here, that's a bridge, that's a road, that's, that's a shadow, so on and so forth. In, in some ways, oh, I don't, not that it would be redundant, but I like the idea of how something very different than like this drawing is from the painting we were just looking at, could still give us some information about like how that painting gets made. And all these drawings start from a very simple idea about taking a circle and just compressing it. It isn't, it isn't like a, a fancy system, but I like the idea of that round, and it grew out of, I think, those cement pieces of all of a sudden finding its curved, curved form in my studio. But I like the idea of like, oh, thinking about the, you know, the curvature of a rise, you know, the hemispherical nature, the spherical nature, the landscape. But also like our cone of vision, what we see in focus as opposed to everything we don't with our whole field of vision. And I like the idea of like, well, compressing it this way or that way. And a lot of it's buried here. It's really, really hard to see. But the idea of like when you would go outside and light would be coming down this way, make you squint. Or, you know, those little, little things that, you know, you're, you feel all the time all the time, but you're not really aware of. But it seemed like a, a rather interesting way to sort of like, sort of continue with what with what was uh, begun with the concrete pieces. And so, as you can see, and I would just, I just accumulate things when I start making the drawing. It's, it's not unlike what Jasper John said with somebody, the, the pop artist asked him about his process. He says, well, I take something and then I do something else to it. And then I do something else to it. And so it's, 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 it's really just about giving myself a number of choices along the way and possibilities. And once I build it up to a certain place and then things just start to look like because there was a moment a couple years in the studio, I was making a drawing. It was very abstract, not unlike the one on the opposite wall from us. And I, and, and I think this happens with a lot of work. You could either make a decision to take it one direction or a de decision to go in the opposite. And I just said, well, what happens if I do this? And I made it look like something. And that's all. And so as you can see with this drawing, you know, all these things that are about just really traveling from this point over to here, how do I move around this curve where these points are, those are the things that become the structure in the painting. So when there's buildings there or a, a road in the distance, it's really the residue of what was necessary to build this curved form or to build that going across. Can I ask you, did you um, study engineering? No, no, I, <laughs> no, 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 no. It, I don't know, and none of these. Oh, okay. No, I, I think in high school I was a failed, a failed mechanical drawing student, but it was, um, none of these things would be able to stand up. I mean, if you look here, I mean, there's things that, are, that purport to be in the air that have no columns underneath it. Things move across, even though there's indications of things bending back in space. So, But no, it, I, I think in some ways I've worked so flatly, so frontally, with flat areas of color, flat shapes, and it was, I just wanted to try something that seemed really, really different that to sort of like get at a painting. Um, can I ask you, can you tell us what inspired your art, um, maybe talk about some of your earlier work that inspired the art that you create today? And some of my heroes? Sure. Oh. Oh gosh, uh, there's a slew of them. I mean, you could go back. And I, I'm, I'm still fascinated by Giotto, I'm looking for Vermeer, Rembrandt, Mondrian to this day still, because for all the abstractness of a Mondrian painting, I mean, the roots of a landscape experience are there, and you go back and look at all his work, like I had an opportunity a few years ago with this large retrospective in New York. I mean, it's undeniable, its presence in those very last ones. And then he sort of returns with those last ones, like the big Broadway Boogie Woogie and things like that. I mean, it just, and so those are, you know, those are some big names. And, and as far as other things that I'm interested, I, I guess when I first started making paintings, I was just, I was just fascinated by the experience. Up to that point, there was nothing that I really cared about. I mean, there's things I like, I enjoyed doing. And I started studying graphic design, and I don't know if that was really going to work out. So, but I did need to take a painting elective, so I did that. But it was the first thing I cared about. You know, and I really can't explain it, and even to this day, I guess, but I feel it, it makes a difference. If I go in the studio and have a chance to do something, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to describe what that difference is in my life, but it gives me something to care about. That was very important when I was young. What do you see for the future? Um, do you see your art evolving into another direction or 
gosh, I don't know. I, I, don't even, I don't even want to think about it because if I looked ahead, you know, before I got to some of these last paintings in here, I would have just, well, I would have keep doing what I was, you know, kept on doing what I was doing before. So I, I try to avoid that because in the last, and this is like over four years, this worker, I've tried to not just stay with something but go from like, you know, some of these prints, images over there which are created digitally, you know, which I had no experience, no knowledge. I just could, didn't know how to make a good photograph, so I just learned Photoshop so I could build it since I didn't know how to take it <laughs> with a camera. And, and then I returned to like making paintings. And, and so it's just been back and forth and I would I'd be reluctant to um, look beyond what's in the studio right now and just let the work take me where it'll take me. Sure. I just wanted to ask you, what are some of the key concepts that you like to impart upon your students today? It's not mine. It's something somebody told me a while, a while ago, and I, I certainly don't mind repeating it, but it has to do with contents of everything in art, but you need the means to preach it. I Meaning, so when we're in class, we're in a studio, it, it's good to like, how do you learn to look at your work? How do you understand it and under, be able to understand what its needs are, articulate those things, what its strengths, what its weaknesses are, so you can move forward and take chances and not be limited by your previous experience in the studio. You know, we talk about this all the time when we're, in, when we're in an art studio, you have an opportunity to fail and quite often you're rewarded because it means you're doing something you're not used to doing. And it's a risk that you put what you already understand how to do in jeopardy. But the reward sometimes can be immense. I mean, it can change somebody's life. You know, and so, I mean, in a nutshell, sort of that. I mean, it gets a little more complicated. Real quickly, I'd like to talk about this drawing because in some ways it occupies an interesting place um, in between the concrete pieces and the later in the later paintings. Because when I made those objects, those concrete pieces, and I was looking at them, all of a sudden there were sides there. It wasn't just like looking at something from the front. And so I guess, in, in some ways what I wanted to point out, I guess the proper way, I guess, maybe to move into this drawing or understand this drawing is the linear components, the linear aspect that you see moving through, winding through that drawing, is an understanding of this drawing from the side. So. These pieces, the darker pieces you see, these vertical pieces that move across the front, are really an understanding about looking at something like this. What's taking place here, the linear components, I say, is about how, this, how that world would look from the side. I, I'm still curious about that idea because, you know, we think of a painting as this flat thing we look upon, or we look out a window and we understand this landscape as this flat thing. The fact of the matter is anything but it wraps around us, it changes, you know, and every time we take a step forward, it changes where we take a step back. And so I was just curious about, like, well, how do you get beyond just that the very flat understanding of a painting? So, in some ways, once I've made this drawing, then a drawing like opposite on the other side of the wall from it, where it seems like you're looking inside one of these concrete objects, but then you're looking at it at the front again. So that idea still interests me, and if, I could, if there's something of anything in here that I guess I really don't understand that well, you know, pretty much everything in here, but it's this drawing in, ter in terms of what this means for tomorrow. What does that mean for tomorrow? Well, it means things aren't, aren't as simple as they seem. You know, everything in retrospect seems, well, quite logical and predictable. You know, but at the time it's like, I don't know what I'm doing, and quite often I don't in the studio, but that's okay, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. It's good. I think we get in trouble when we know too much, and I think there's a lot of my colleagues that would, would agree with that. So. Thank you very much for taking this time with us. I appreciate it. We have a puppetry exhibit called Pulling Strings, and this particular one is from um, uh, Vermont, and it's the uh, Bread and Puppet Company. It's a very large uh, puppet held by poles. Uh, many, many community members create this, and 
the different artists uh, bringing in the puppetry. He himself